Now tell me, what's the real reason that you clicked on this video? You want to know something about why your 4C, 4Z, 5G LTE hair is not growing. And the thing about today's video is I'm going to let you know. And regardless of where you are on your journey, whether you're transitioning, you are fully natural, you did a big chop, or you know what, you're still in the process of, you know, getting texturizers, perms, relaxers. I'm not here to judge you, sis. Everybody's journey is their own and it's unique to them. And so what I'm gonna force you guys to do is think a little bit outside of the box, give you some perspective. But before we get into the real tea, I wanna state, and I want you guys to process this, repeat it until you actually like receive it and you believe it. Length is not in any way an indicator of health when it comes to your hair. Because from a genetic you know, standpoint, some people just have a disposition where their hair grows regardless of whether they're eating trash their blood workup says that they have you know deficiencies some people still can bounce back and if it's not you it's okay but we're going to talk a lot about how you can make sure that your protective styles are actually protective and they're allowing your hair to retain its length and thus continue to grow so let's get into the video now if you're new here i'm taste pink and you know what i'm saying i focus on hair lifestyle and i want to start doing more of like an educational kind of series because since i got a lot of ideas in my mind and i'm tired of keeping them in there i want to share them and if you are like someone who's watched my videos maybe you've perused a little bit you haven't quite subscribed i definitely think you should and turn your post notifications on but i'm someone who is very very like i have a process and i think think about every step when I am doing my hair. I'm someone who has a hair journal. I document things that are going on with me personally, emotionally, physically, as far as my diet is concerned. I'm very in tune with my body and that all can have an impact on the health of your hair. I get so many comments from the girls like, paint my hair, you know, it's not growing, it's breaking, it's brittle and these are all common concerns because i was once in your position i was transitioning i hated everything about it i was in a position where i typically relied on my stylist to kind of like force feed me information and while i am going to be giving you guys a ton of information i want to challenge you to actively look into the topics that i'm going to be talking about because it's important for you to understand it at your level so it makes sense regardless of any information that i'm like spitting at you so anyway sis um, I want to tell you why protective styles aren't growing your actual hair. So for the first thing, it could be that your hair isn't healthy in the first place. So when I was transitioning, which I actually hated transitioning, I do not recommend that. I think that um, for the girls who are 4C, just chop it off. I know it's easier said than done. It's something I couldn't do. I don't think I have the head for a big chop. You know what I'm saying? Low cut, anything like that. So what I recommend is Chop it all off, but if you can't do that, transition. But before you do, you need to do so much research on the products that work for your hair so that you are safeguarding your hair for this transition. I was using Tresemme. I didn't have no business using Tresemme. I mean, Tresemme is good, but Suave Naturals is everything that the natural, kinky, coarse, textured hair girls really need in their life. I don't spend more than like $5 on conditioner. And to be honest with you, if you wish to, you can, but you don't need to. So I took some notes, I'm gonna read off. Like if your hair is damaged, if it's brittle, if you're having breakage, you have to start paying attention to the symptoms and learning how to treat the symptoms associated with you know your hair damage. So if you're someone who's colored your hair, so if you've processed it, you've taken it up a few levels, you have to really focus on moisture retention, which will lend to length retention. And so looking into products that can help penetrate the cortex. So one of the the oils that I highly recommend for the girls is avocado oil. Avocado oil has different properties than other oils where it can actually, you know, penetrate the layers of the hair and provide adequate moisture. So coconut oil isn't doing it for me. Okay. I put it in my hair. It does nothing. Um, I don't like the way it feels and it just, it's not a situation where I feel like I'm getting the, you know, most beneficial moisture retention. So I would not push that on any of the girls. 
and also you need to have a hair journal so with a hair journal you can start like documenting everything that's going on with your hair so if you notice that you're stressed one particular week or if you have a situation where you notice that your hair is particularly dry are you paying attention to the time of year are you paying attention to what's going on in your life and how you're eating i think the biggest thing for me is when i transition to becoming a vegetarian what I did not do was enough research to protect my hair during that transition because I was in a position where I was losing like a substantial amount of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and I wasn't supplementing that loss. So my hair took a huge hit. So taking that hair journal and documenting just changes in your life, you know, your eating, your physical fitness and how you feel emotionally, your self care is really important and also being a conscious consumer. So not someone who's a product junkie, just on the verge of like, just every time there's a new product release, you want everything. Don't do that, sis. You waste a lot of money and it's a lot of like trial and error that you don't have to put yourself through. And as I stated, like when you transition from a different diet or you start like eliminating certain food groups from, you know, your daily eating habits, you may have a vitamin and mineral deficiency and a lot of people don't get their blood work done to tell them what is actually wrong and i think one of the biggest things especially for black women in general because your doctors aren't listening to you sis so what you have to do is you have to go get your vitals like your blood work up done and specifically check on things like iron you want to know what's going on with your zinc you also want to get more in tune with um your vitamin D and your vitamin B and these are things that you you know may think like oh I'm eating certain food groups and I'm getting it but like absorption is a very convoluted like topic and when it comes to respect to how your body is processing these things you may have to do like a process of like eliminating and really understanding your body and what allows it to have the best absorption so you get the best like nutritional like value from every product that you consume that you apply on your hair another thing is like hair loss is huge so especially especially like within my family especially like alopecia is a big thing and you can get a scalp biopsy so if you're hesitant if you notice that you may be balding in certain areas like I know it's a struggle if I ever go bald I'm just really like I already wear wigs and do stuff so get comfortable with the idea that you may have to adapt to a different lifestyle and that protective styling may not be your thing because you could be in a position where your hair can't necessarily handle it the low manipulation and the um what i would say like low tension styles it's more for you to start assessing because just because it worked when you were 19 it may not work when you're 38 especially after you have children and those fluctuations in your estrogen fluctuations with your the functionality of your thyroid i tell women in particular like if you don't check up on your thyroid go see your endocrinologist because she's or you know whomever is going to be like a wealth of knowledge for you because any issues with the thyroid says like it's a whole it's a dub like you're going to be in a bad position metabolism at a at various different parts of your body could start to suffer and your hair could take a hit so it doesn't matter if you're getting the vitamins that you need you're eating like a well-balanced diet and you don't have any deficiencies and you're not like a product junkie just like introducing your hair to new or different products every other week or month it's about making sure that your body can actually like maintain they call it like homeostasis it's like a regulatory phase where your body is operating at like optimum levels so you can get everything that your body needs and while you think i'm healthy now i'm good now a lot can change right like b before your eyes and you won't even notice it you could literally be standing in the mirror one day and you have a patch you know i've had clients who come to me like i don't know what's going on but at the crown of my head you know it's kind of like thinning it's a little bit balding and i've had other clients where it's more severe and 
you start to notice like large sections of your hair it just doesn't grow in the way the pace of it changes and it's very gradual and i know it's hard to grapple with don't normalize like the culture of like shaming women or men for how they choose to deal with health issues alopecia is another concern it's an autoimmune disease it's really like where your body is attacking your hair follicles so think about that like it's a lot more serious but we make so many jokes about it not understanding like the underlying processes that are going on that sort of impede the growth of your hair the length retention of your hair so you know that's why i'm really slow to crack a joke i know we do the whole thing you know i got a perm my hair broke off it doesn't grow you know sis so another thing that could be preventing your hair is like stress and anxiety so i am very much aware of the stress that's like related with working i used to be in corporate america and work politics is a bitch if i could be honest and so the stress and the anxiety of going into a workplace and environment being in college to my girls like going to school that workload and having to consistently produce especially if you care about your grades and you you don't want to further your education that stress has an impact on your hair it has an impact on your body some people the stress gets so extreme they get ulcers so it's like to work on the stress and anxiety and that work-life balance like I said I know it's easier said than done but a lot of us put we put ourselves like at the back burner because we we need this job we need this education we need to continue going because we have our goals but if you forget about yourself in the long run what does that mean for your hair honestly when I considered going to medical school I was so concerned about the stress associated with like finishing up another eight years because what that would mean for me like my hair I don't even know if I would have hair I probably would have shaved my head you know what I'm saying because I don't want to have to worry about this I don't want to have to do research I don't want to have to do uh, rounds clinical rounds I don't want to have to do a residency and then be focused on my hair like I don't believe it would have flourished because of the stress the anxiety of that type of environment um, especially you know how they do uh, minorities um, especially women in those particular environments undergrad for me was interesting so I'm just keeping it real and you may have poor blood circulation so how often do you massage your scalp I know it's easy to forget about it you know if you got Bay, if he's available if she's available whomever if someone is available to help you make this a regular part of your routine, you will notice a difference. We forget about our hair. We realize that we have to move our body. It's important that we move our body so that we continue to have like adequate blood flow to all parts of our body. And the same applies to your scalp. So work on massaging your scalp about five to 10 minutes out of the day, about three to five times a week. I know it may seem daunting, but sis, take the time do what feels right and honestly you could you could see a world of a difference and also nothing beats just going in with your hands and if you want to take it a step further i think doing a leave-in hot oil treatment along with a scalp massage will be everything and you can use something like an applicator brush this is what they use when they're like adding highlights when they're processing the hair in some capacity but applying that kind of product or like the bristles on your scalp that's giving you a different type of stimulation which again can help with circulation so again don't sleep on it and then like i said before you have to figure out whether low tension versus low manipulation is going to be what needs to perpetuate itself throughout your journey so low tension styles i would say braidless crochet Meaty, moderate to high tension, I would say is still crochet braids. But on the other hand, some people really like to rock with their natural hair. I mean, I try to get into it, but 4C, 4Z, 5G, LTE, I can't um, right now. And so I think that 
you know if you want to do the twist outs understanding that the tighter your curl pattern is that means that it's harder for moisture to travel to the end of your hair and so when you have your hair in its natural state whether you did a twist out a braid out this is all good but think about the moisture that sits on your scalp and it's never really trickling down to the very ends of your hair and like i told you guys a part of the mechanism of your hair is that it's working to draw the hair back to the scalp because that is the moisture source so i mentioned that before i know y'all probably like okay now everything makes sense but that's why I introduced certain things in my videos and I wanted to come in and just kind of give a more in-depth look and make everything make sense. If you see someone else's journey, stop comparing yourself. I think comparison is a thief of joy. There have been people in my comments like, your hair should be longer. But like, sis, do you have a channel? Are you telling the girls what to do? Like, you know, let's help each other and let's stop like doing this comparative kind of thing to where we want to make someone feel lesser than just because their hair isn't a certain length. I think I'm gonna do a follow-up and do like an in-depth scalp routine, but y'all gotta let me know if y'all even wanna see that. I appreciate you all for watching. Um, I feel like this was bomb. And uh, I hope I see you in the next one. And if anything, I'll probably come back and talk more about the supplements that I take for my hair because I think that's a big thing and I think y'all would like that. But if you have any questions, comments, definitely leave them below. Don't forget to share this because a lot of the girls are misinformed and I'll have some articles linked in the description box. So definitely watch out for that and um, don't forget to like, okay? <laughs> you gotta like it. It means a lot. And I will see you in the next one.